Welcome to this week's episode of Listen to Your Coaches. I'm your coach, Mike Wilkins, here with Coach Will Morrill. This week, we're going to talk about some jiu-jitsu belt promotions. Uh, Will's going to have a couple questions for me as a promoting instructor. Um, and just, you know, a little bit down on that topic. Um, at time of filming, we're only two days removed from Style PGH's most recent belt promotions. Uh, not sure when this will drop, but, you know, it's fresh in our heads, so let's rip it. All let's right. get it. Why don't you start me off with some questions? All right, so I think uh, first things first, kind of like big overarching question is, what are you as an instructor looking for to see someone progress from white to blue, blue to purple, and on and on? All right, so uh, each of those belts is, is going to be different, obviously, as mm -hmm. you'd imagine. I'm going to be looking for different things. But I would say um, for where I'm at right now, I don't have like a hard list mm -hmm. of criteria, all right? Uh, so I'm only um, a little over five years into being like a promoting instructor, meaning that I'm a, I'm a black belt who does promote other people mm -hmm. to 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 the various belts. Uh, one thing that probably should be noted is I am not able to give out a black belt, mm -hmm. right? Um, next year I'll be able to. Uh, so currently you're not able to promote another to black belt on mm -hmm. your own merit. Um, until you're a second degree black belt, which right. I'm eligible for my second degree come January of 2025. Mm -hmm. um, so once I receive that, I will be able to promote the black belt. But I have promoted, you know, plenty of blue belts, mm -hmm. a lot of purple belts, and, you know, a handful of brown belts right. uh, in that time. Uh, the way we do it at, um, you know, our school, Stout PGH, um, we use a striping system that mm -hmm. is recognized by the IBJJF um, for, like, kind of like markers in between the belts, right. you know? Currently, we only stripe at white and blue. Once you receive your purple belt, you are done receiving stripes in our system until you're a black belt and you get your first degree. Right. You know, then you're back on getting a stripe. Um, I don't think that stripes at those other belts are like not valuable. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? Or don't, don't have a place. Um, I just think they don't have as much of a place as they do in the lower belts. Because do you think it's because as an upper belt, you kind of know where you are? Well, I think of it, yes, as an upper belt, you kind of know where you are. That's mm -hmm. definitely an element. But I think the stripes are primarily used in our case as like when you're eligible for certain classes, mm -hmm. right? So right. like in our, in our system, um, you know, obviously anybody can take fundamentals classes. Right. But to be eligible to participate in the open mat mm -hmm. or to take intermediate classes, you have to be a three stripe white belt. Right. You know, and I do have like the more that I've gotten into promoting, obviously I'm doing those a lot more than I'm doing belts. Right. right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause like, you know, it's a, it's a slide on the way mm -hmm. up. Like, you know, like a, a lot more people make it to their first stripe on their white belt than make it the black belt. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I've probably given out like, you know, a lot of first stripes, a lot mm -hmm. of second stripes, third stripes, and you know, I've striped a lot more than I've, Right, promote. giving out belts. Um, so I do have a criteria that I look for for that. Um, and I think that if I give you my criteria, it will help kind of make sense of what I'm looking for when I get into like the belt ranks as well. Right. So, and I, and I, I ask, uh, I tell my, you know, like people can have their own criteria even in our system. Right. You know what I mean? But I think a lot of the instructors do kind of follow the criteria that I have outlined. Mm-hmm. So what I'm looking for for you to receive your first stripe, I'm looking to see that you are able to drill, mm -hmm. right? You're able to like follow along with the class and hit the moves in drilling. And I want to see that you're also an adequate drill partner, meaning that you're not hindering your right. your partner's time with their drilling and their learning. Right, right? exactly. And I want to see it happen consistently. And yeah, that's yeah. going to be the theme. <laughs> that's going to be the theme is consistently. Like if you come in and it's your like fifth class, and like you are meeting this criteria, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it's not going to happen. Right yeah, then not enough there. data. No, no, no. I want to see it happen consistently. Mm -hmm. So I would say, typically for me, if I see you on a consistent basis doing this for you know a month or two months, right? Like that's probably going to be enough for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Then for the second stripe, it relies heavily on your live training, okay. right? So like obviously you have met the criteria for your first stripe, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's all assumed. I want to see you attempting the the right techniques right. in the live training, you know? Like when it's appropriate for you to go for this 
bridge to try to take the back. I mm-hmm. want to see that, right? When it's appropriate for you to try to retain a guard, I want to see that. When mm-hmm. it's appropriate for you to hip out with your frames, I want to see that. Now, th- this might be answered just by the structure of the classes, but are you looking specifically that they're doing the techniques that you taught that day or that they're using just the appropriate technique for the time? Which The again... appropriate technique for the time, which a lot of the times our fundamentals is positional training. So mm-hmm. you're training, you are training in the position that we worked that day. So those two things kind of do go, yeah. hand, they happen to go hand in hand due to the structure of mm-hmm. the positional live training training that we're going to be doing in right. the fundamentals level class. But if you showed, I don't know, uh, you're showing like a flower sweep from Well, closed. check this out. Here goes how it could go the other way. So, for example, if I'm teaching this week, we're, we're teaching, we'll be teaching, um, you know, the first portion of half guard bottom, mm-hmm. right? We'll talk about like good positioning in half guard and the tenets of that good positioning, such as having an underhook on the near side because mm-hmm. it makes it difficult for your opponent to pin you oh, why don't we want to be pinned? Because now we're able to move a little bit better, all right? If we're able to move a little bit better, we're going to be able to defend against our opponent's passes, right? Because we've got motion that we can use to our assistance. And we're also going to be able to attack better because we can move. So we can improve our position to wherever, you know, we see fit. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to be teaching that this week. But when you go live, half of your live... It's your partner's turn on bottom, so you're on top. Mm -hmm. You might be hitting the right things as the top person at the right times, and therefore, that'll trigger, like, you know. That'll fulfill that criteria. Yeah, it could fulfill that criteria outside of the moves learned in class. Right. Also, um, a lot of the the moves learned in class are are concept-based, right? It's Mm -hmm. like, okay, we want to stop them from being able to hip away because it keeps them close to us. Mm -hmm. Like, da-da-da-da. So, like, you know, like, maybe I taught you that we, like, place our elbow here, Mm -hmm. right? And maybe you used your hand, but it it, it served it the, same the same purpose. Thing, right. You know what I mean? And again, this is talking about the second stripe. I want to see you attempting them. Success. Success doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Right? If your partner, you know, you're 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 a one stripe white belt, your partner, you know, four stripe white belt, your partner's a blue belt or whatever, and you're trying, like, oh, like I'm gonna try to do, you know, this arm drag and they pulled their arm out, like I don't care. Right. You, you just... made the right call, right? Like you what you need is reps, you need just mm-hmm. more time there because what does more time there give you? More timing, more understanding of like when when, when it's... The intricacies yeah, of the it. Yeah, the intricacies, right? Success will come. So what you're looking for is simply that they know the right thing to do yeah. in that moment. Yeah, the ability to successfully do it, first off, and then also that, that like the ability to successfully do it may also depend, like as I'm saying, on your part, the skill of your partner. Right, exactly. Right, right. Like, like maybe you would have hit it on somebody who didn't know this but you're you're training with a purple belt today. right so yeah. absolutely nothing <laughs> yeah. is going to work except for the stuff they let you work exactly you know um but so that's why it doesn't matter mm-hmm. right but here goes the thing i need to see it consistently yeah. yeah right like you got your first i start seeing you do that like dude like i need to see it like for a couple months right right it can't just be what like it can't just be happenstance mm-hmm. it's you not know, just like the first see, time you see it and you're like oh stripe it I up to, yeah i need to see it consistently and i need mm-hmm. to see it like because like i also want to see it from multiple positions right right like if we're working on half guard for example we're on half guard this we just jumped in the half guard in our mm-hmm. curriculum this week um in our fundamentals curriculum we'll be on half guard for three weeks mm-hmm. we're gonna go bottom top bottom mm-hmm. right so like i want to see it from multiple positions and that's just half guard and then we're going to move on to, um, I believe, back control, mm-hmm. right? Like, okay, I want to see it happen there, too. Right, and then right? So, like, that way, yeah, and, like, I don't need to see it happen everywhere, but if I start to see it happen consistently, which means I'm seeing it the way the curriculum works, it's rare that we spend, like, three weeks. Right. On a, three weeks on a position is probably, like, pretty average. Um, then the, it, when I see it through a couple positions, I know it's a, I know it's a trend, right? I can predict that you also... Like you're getting it. You're getting exactly. Like, that's telling me that you're you're getting like what's happening, right? You're understanding. You're understanding the goals here, mm-hmm. right? And then for that third stripe, which is typically the most coveted promotion yep. in in our <laughs> gym, uh, because it opens you up to open mat, uh-huh. which and is intermediate. So much fun yep. and intermediate. But I feel like people, it's like about getting into that open. Mat. Yeah, oh yeah. Getting into that open mat, going out there and scrapping, like having a good time, having the most fun part of it. Exactly. You know? uh, and the reason we want you to be a, like we want you to go into that open mat with some level of skill and competency, not only for for your progression, but for your safety and your partner's safety. Exactly. Right? All of you out there who have done jujitsu for any period of time, you understand that with the skill comes a level of safe. Like the the more skilled person you're going yep. against, the more safe you are 
against things like accidental elbows and like like the unfortunate exactly like spaz yeah. things that we'll see. Yeah, so so like that's and, and, and honestly like oh so my third stripe criteria is like uh, I want to see some success. Yeah, and again. The common theme is consistently. Now, is it more uh, defensive or offensive? Because, like, for me, for someone to get into, like, my advanced classes, yeah. I put a huge premium on defense unless it's a massive person. Yeah, no. Um, mine is pretty much... Both sides. Both sides, mm-hmm. evenly. Because, like, what is defensive? What is what is, what is is defense and what is offense in jiu-jitsu? Like, that's a whole other question. That is Right? Like, is it complex. defense because somebody threw an arm lock on you and you were able to defend? Right. right or is it defense because you would you call it defense if you were in bottom side control and you retained a guard is that defense I, to me that's offense well, and all, yeah like what's a Kimura is a Kimura offense but what if I'm using a Kimura trap to defend a takedown now it's defense and offense so yeah I can yeah, see what you're saying right? it gets so a little, it's, like, it's a little yeah I yeah. just want to see like development through the through the entirety mm-hmm. of it and then that fourth stripe on the white belt is just like, uh, hey man, I see you keep, I see you're progressing. Right? Would you say that the fourth stripe on the white belt is halfway between you start open mat and you have a blue belt I would say that would be like a probably a good average. It's probably mm-hmm. a good average, um, but it Which does, we should definitely say, does not hold standard. Everything that you're saying is still individual to oh, person. there's and we're gonna get into the individual mm-hmm. to the person. But that's what I'm looking at at like promoting the white belts. So mm-hmm. then it's like okay, like how do you know someone's ready for a blue belt? Right, yeah. it's completely individual. Mm-hmm. Right, first off, it's how are you doing against the other people who are kind of like in the hunt for a blue belt mm-hmm. how are you doing against the most recent crop of blue belts right and like things like that and like you know it's like kind of like um remember when you're growing up and you go to the doctor and you, you they get your height and they're like oh mm-hmm. whoa you're in the 88th percentile mm-hmm. right like i'm kind of like looking at you where you are in the percentile. right exactly like you know what i mean and like against that field right so for example maybe while you're a three-stripe white belt in that field of people vying for blue belts or people who have just received blue belts, maybe you're in like uh, in like roughly the 15th percentile, right? right? But then all of a sudden that top percentile gets mo- removed from that data because now they're two straight blue belts. Right. So they're removed from that data. Now all of a sudden you, like if I remember from the data, you become the 50th percentile, yeah, yeah. right? And then also all those two stripers come up, mm-hmm. right? And like, so like you, like, like there's a, a natural like graduation exactly of, of things. So I kind of like, just kind of like use that. And again, I want to see things consistently. And now is probably a good time to jump into how do I promote people differently? All yeah, right? that's what I was going to get into. So like a good example for this would be um, like, like a competition base, mm-hmm. all right? And what your goals are, all right? So for example, if I know somebody, you know, is fond of competing and wants to pursue like the competition side of jujitsu a little more seriously they might stay at that belt a little longer just Mm. for them to get more, if I think it's better for their progression to get more experience there. Right. Right. So let's say like you're a white belt and like if you were to do some Nagas and grappling industries at white belt, you would perform well. Like you might win a gold, right? Mm -hmm. But you're going to win a couple silvers, a couple bronzes, maybe a deep bracket you don't place or Mm -hmm. whatever. I'm probably going to keep you at white belt to get more reps and experience at white belt, right? Because I don't want to throw you in the blue belt and like, have that be like too much too soon exactly you know and that's that's what like my concern would be with the competitor Mm -hmm. i've had it work the other way the most the last promotions we did in december of 23 um the promoting instructors we were talking and stuff and i was like you know basically saying to the all the other instructors like you know like at especially for like blue belt like if another black belt thinks you're a blue belt good enough for me Mm -hmm. you know what i mean i'm like hey go promote them right right like grab the belt go out there promote them Mm -hmm. if you think they're good enough right like you don't have to like ask my permission right they don't have to convince you right yeah if you think it do it um and i probably shouldn't have said that (laughs) right because there was one person in particular right who for competition purposes this person wanted to be an mma fighter wants to be an mma fighter Uh right they had only done one tournament Mm -hmm. and i felt like they could have gotten more experience competing. Right. Like that more experience of doing competitions would have been better. And I'd rather, although that, you know, you could roll with them and be like, yeah, I could see you as a blue belt. Mm -hmm. Right. I felt like they could have gotten more value out of getting more experience on learning how to compete. Right. Right. So I would have liked them to have stayed at white belt. Mm -hmm. All right. This person got promoted, 
can't take it back. Yep. Right? I'm like, damn, dude. I'm like, I didn't want him promoted. I had some competition plans for yeah. him. You know? Uh, so this person then would not have received their blue belt until two days ago. Mm -hmm. This past Saturday, which is June of 24. Since then, since December and June, this person has done several tournaments at blue belt and is now basically winning them. Yeah. You know, and it's like, okay. Sometimes so, people surprise you. With... So this, he rose to the occasion. Exactly. Right? That person's Brian Mitchell. Okay. Oh, Brian's the man. Brian Mitchell. Sean Lipka gave him his blue belt. I was like, oh, dude. I was like, yeah, like, like I get it. Yeah. Like, he can totally be a blue yeah. belt. But, like, he's going to be a fighter. Mm -hmm. Right? So, like, I want, like, to, There's slightly to, to different groom standards. him a little, exactly. little bit different. Mm -hmm. Right? So those are things that we look at. Right. You know what I mean? Especially me as the head MMA coach along with you that's what i look at for my jujitsu side let me ask you something else now kind of on the opposite side of that so that's someone who's you know excelling uh, relative to the the average i guess what about someone maybe what if i started jujitsu and i was you know 55 years old i never played any sports not in great I wanted shape. to get into that yeah. yeah um you know uh it's just kind of like again like i'm not comparing you against the 25 year old right all right um I can see your technique mm -hmm. happening, right? So, like, you might lose to a kid who's a four-stripe white belt in a roll, mm -hmm. and but you might get your blue belt, and that kid might not. Because you did the right because things. Because, I, I, like, we, we can see generally what's happening, right? right? And, like, I can, I can see through, especially with experience now. I'm, like, mm -hmm. I'm obviously getting better at it right. as, as I progress as a, as a coach. I can see through that, mm -hmm. right? So that you, it's not, like, necessarily, like, straight up, like, well, this guy, I beat this... I beat this person in open mat, or I beat this person in class. That doesn't mean you're better than exactly. them. Exactly. Right? Like, you know what I mean? That'd be the equivalent of if I was like, hey, Mike, I'm going to have you go fight the 105-pound uh, Rajam Nern champion. Oh, and yeah. you're going to go and smoke this kid. I'm going to smash him. He's significantly <laughs> better than me. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. But anyone who's skilled. watching who knows Muay Thai would be like, oh, well, that kid's yeah. better. He's just yeah. undersized. Dude, if you get like a 360 pound blue belt yeah probably gonna dude might beat me <laughs> probably gonna beat me Maybe. right no i mean like i i put my money on that dude. like like you know like a big old like you know size, athletic yeah strong. size matters sure you know what i mean and so and so forth like age can, like age can absolutely matter and stuff like that so there are you know there's just a different grading scale mm -hmm. the the cool thing about it is uh by the time anybody especially in our academy is like halfway to per halfway from blue belt to purple belt they get it yeah so yeah. you lose like all the like oh i should have got right. this i should have got that but like, i beat that yeah, guy they, yeah exactly they're like no dude like like what the the example we just gave is like common sense at that yeah. it was like common knowledge, knowledge right. at that point now is that maybe i'm jumping some steps here and you know go back if you want to discuss some more details at blue belt but is that something that you're looking for to get the purple belt is that sort of wisdom so a little bit, yeah. Like, cause I, I want to see how you're training. You know what I mean. I want to see like your capabilities, like in training, your abilities to like roll with different people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. Like, so you know, if you're you know a two hundred pound like blue belt who's like on consideration for purple belt, I would love to see how you roll with a three stripe white belt, mm -hmm. right? And like to like somebody who's like not super familiar might be like, oh yeah, you want to see him smash, right? No. I actually want to see like how close you can make that feel. Right. How you know can I mean? how can they work properly? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How can that three stripe white belt leave that role thinking that they did well? Right. Until they get enough knowledge to know that they did well because you were rolling in a certain manner. Yeah. You were right? drilling. They were rolling. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah. You should be able to drill like mm -hmm. live drill against that right. person in a way without it being like like with obvious. Well, I wanted to see. I wanted to see the technique in it. Right. You know right. Exactly. I mean? And then again, I, I mean, competitors. I'm using competition foot. I'm using competition feeds. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm using the same thing. Like, where are you lying in that percent? Like, like mm -hmm. how how are you doing compared to the other purple belts here? How are you doing compared to the other blue belts who are who are you know biding for that right? And are you doing it consistently? Now this might also be a good place for me to ask this: Where so let's say that you have someone who is uh, we'll just say D one level wrestler, right? Yes. They came in, they you know fly through their white belt stripes. They you know they're a blue belt in this eight months common. or whatever. Like a D one wrestler is gonna like get, especially in this area, they're this gonna get of... to their third stripe like they almost like 
they almost start with it. Almost. Right. All like yeah. Almost. Almost start with it because again, what we're looking for with the third stripe is the the entry into open mat and stuff. Mm-hmm. So so a lot of the wrestlers who have like who are like at, at a serious level. Right. Um. Th- so th- our criteria for certain classes, it's you know like okay, so for example, like intermediate and open mat, three stripe white belt or invitation. Exactly. Right. Like you have like the like an instructor mm-hmm. can can like pump you in. Pump you in. Same with like advanced. It's like. Mm-hmm. It's like one stripe. I don't even know the rules for. I think it's one stripe blue belt. One stripe blue belt or invitation. Right. You know what I mean. So there's that, and a lot of the wrestlers who come in, like I'm like, yeah, dude, hop in the open mat because why? You know how to roll, so you're gonna like the things we're worried about is like uh, elbow, like, right. oh bang, headbutt, oh oh my, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to do like, and those things are gonna happen regardless. Yeah. But they happen at so. a significantly exactly. less rate, or like oh, I accidentally jumped on your knee. Right. Yeah. You know, like that, like like a wrestler. Like every rep is going to come in and have, they've got they have tremendous reception. Yeah, and the awareness. it's the same thing, dude. We're doing the same thing. It's yeah. just what are the goals? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's like what are the goals? It's me moving you. Your it's me moving your body against your will, mm-hmm. right? And it's just like what are the goals? Okay, in wrestling, my goal is to hold your back on the mat. All right, jujitsu, my goal is different, right. but I'm still need to move your body. Exactly. Right. What if in wrestling it was like, oh, we're, we want to. What if you were doing wrestling? But it was in a cage. It was like, all right, instead of pinning them on the mat, we have to pin them on the cage. Right. Right. Yeah. Like it changes. You still have the abilities. You just like there's carryover though. There's carry. Yeah. Tons so of carryover. that's kind of what I'm getting at here. Is like uh, it's pretty easy. I don't want to say easy, but like uh, for a D1 wrestler, like legit you've wrestler. Already, if you're wrestling to, D1, you've got years and years of grappling exactly. experience. So you you're basically starting as a three stripe white belt. Right. For you're gonna purposes. get submitted. Yeah, for you're sure. You're gonna get submitted. By, you're, gonna probably by, you're gonna get submitted by blue belts, definitely by purple belts. belts. Even some white belts are gonna catch you in some like guillotines and triangles. Right, just stuff that and, you didn't and, know. You're gonna learn it though. Exactly. And, and, and it's happening because you don't know, right? Yes. Like you just don't know. Like like oh, I didn't didn't know that was a thing. Exactly. Right. Like, but they know? but they figured that out very quickly. So what I'm trying to get at is like they can become a blue belt significantly faster than like the average Joe, yes. right? So now they're a blue belt, right? They're tough. They're athletic. They know how to roll. They can control where the grappling takes place based on their wrestling, right? Right. For someone who is a good wrestler, what does that look like from blue to purple, like relative to the average person? Well, let's start, let's just start with what is, if you had to give an overall criteria in your mind, blue to purple, what are you looking for? What am I looking for? I'm looking for you um, you know, I'm looking to see how you do, like I said, against the other people of right. that rank, mm-hmm. right? I'm looking for you to start to develop, like, an identity also, right? That's what I was trying to get at. Like, all the purple belts, I can go and be like, Explain all right, their like, game. like, yeah, I'd be like, even if you're, like, super well-rounded, right. like, you probably have some type of niche. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, oh, like, you, like, like, oh, you're a tremendous guard passer, you got great guard retention, your sweeps are good, but you're, like, niche, you're a leg locker. Right. Right. Like you like getting into these entanglements. Um, so like I definitely want to see you start to develop a game where like, you know, like someone like like if you were me, like taking me going in the purple, mm-hmm. you're like, Oh, you're you're a passer. Exactly. Right? Like type of thing. So when you take this wrestler then who has the ability to smash probably a lot of like purple belts and maybe even some brown belts. That's just, the other thing that we should probably touch on, right? Like, right, like lower belts can beat upper belts. It doesn't make you the upper better. like yeah. It doesn't make you Better doesn't mean you're worse, better, or, or anything. It does not award you that title. Exactly. Right? That title comes through consistency. Right? There's and consistency knowledge. and knowledge and skill. There's 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 many pieces of this pie that mm-hmm. you need to have in order to achieve these ranks, right? That's, it would be like okay. if I beat an All-American, I can't be like, well, I was an All-American. No, you have to right. like, go through the season, win mm-hmm. the conference, enter the tournament, and do it there. Yep. You can't get a win over them and then say that you you are that. There's uh, a process. That would have been nice because then I would have been an All-American boxer, but neither here nor there. Um, I so still wouldn't have been an All-American this is, <laughs> <laughs> this is, dude, my best win was over the guy who finished second at 185. Oh, that's good. You, yeah. Why didn't you fight 185, dude? <sighs> Mistakes were made. But anyways... <laughs> um, so this is what I was trying to get at, though, is like this wrestler can go through and smash like a lot of upper belts, but now he's a blue belt, right? 
what does that wrestler in particular need? Because they're not. It's not just how well they're doing against these other guys. It's is it that they start time. to develop a they style? Need time. No, they. I mean, their style is likely going to be smash. like a, no. They can stay just smash. Passing. It just needs to be refined. They, yeah, it just needs to be refined. I need to see them have. An understanding of what what happens when that's not working out, mm-hmm. right? They're going to get put on their back. They're going to get mm-hmm. put in leg entanglements. They're going to need to deal with that to a certain degree. But also, you need time, right? And guess what? That time isn't dictated just by me, mm-hmm. all right? For example, especially if you want to be a competitor, mm-hmm. right? If you're a competitor, okay. Let's take Lucas for example. Mm-hmm. Lucas got his blue belt. He's been a blue belt a little over a year. Um, he got it either late May or early June of last year, right? right? And then Lucas competed in Worlds, mm-hmm. okay? Lucas can't be a purple belt for two years. You know what I mean? Because the IBJJF minimum is two years. Now, it might be hard. Like, if I was like, ah, oh, you know what? You're a purple belt now. The IBJJF, without watching this video, probably couldn't say, oh, you can't be a purple right. belt. Because they don't know when he got his blue belt. Because he didn't compete as a white belt. Right. But let's say this. Let's say this, for example. Let's say that I did give him a purple belt, and mm-hmm. then he competed at an IBJJF in purple belt right now. Mm-hmm. Well, the minimum's 18 months there. And then I give him a brown belt in a year. Mm-hmm. They'll be like, no, dude, you were a blue belt in December. Right. This is impossible. Even if, even if that was your last day as a blue belt, that wasn't enough time as a purple belt, you're suspended. Mm-hmm. Right? And people get suspended. Now, you can overcome that suspension by winning worlds. There was oh. recently Vince just told me about this one woman who um um she went from blue belt to black belt in like two years. She won I'm not exactly sure of the order, but no Gee Worlds is in December, Gee Worlds is in June. Mm-hmm. All right. So for the fun of it, let's say she won um she won no Gee Worlds mm-hmm. at Blue Belt, got her purple belt. Right. Won Gee Worlds at Purple Belt, mm-hmm. got her brown belt. Won Nogi Worlds at Brown Belt, and they recognize belt. that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you That's win Worlds, so you can be promoted. Uh, that makes promoted. sense. Yeah, I thought it would be like a full calendar year, though. Like if you won Gi Worlds, but you I guess it doesn't make Gi. sense. But yeah, but like you know what I mean. So yeah, if you keep like, winning, like I don't know which order what Gi's first or right, Nogi doesn't first, matter. But she went from Blue Belt. What is that? Let's just say December to June. So she was mm-hmm. a, she won Blue Belt in December. So she was a Blue Belt in December. Got her purple belt, got her brown belt in June. So she went through purple belt in only six months and then brown belt in only six mm-hmm. months. So she went from blue belt to black belt in a year and change, you know, by winning the worlds. Right. Which makes sense. You won the worlds. Yeah. You should Clearly, be able to, yeah. you shouldn't be hamstrung to being held back. But, you know, they, they do that and they only uh, recognize the adult worlds. Um, mm-hmm. There was an instance where a woman won masters worlds mm-hmm. at the blue belt and got her purple belt, but it was within too short of a time. Frame. So she, she was um, suspended. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So um, then, all right. So we've talked a little bit about blue belt to purple, and we've discussed the kind of the average. We've discussed the freak athletes. What about the other side? Okay. So I started jujitsu. I was, you know, 55. It took me a little time to get in shape, get yeah. a blue belt, blah, blah, whatever. Now, dude, I'm in my early 60s, you know, um, and I've been a blue belt for a little while, you know, like what, what, is, what do I need to do to be a purple belt? I mean, you need to do the same thing the other guys need to do. You need to do well comparative to the other blue belts and purple belts. You need to, and again, what is doing well? Is doing well winning the rules? No, doing the well could be posing making the right, right threat, making the right decisions. If I think that you're being, the only reason you're being overcome here is due to, you know, an athletic advantage to your mm-hmm. partner, a weight advantage to your partner, a strength advantage to your partner. Um, as long as it's also within like reason, right? right? Yeah, yeah. Like, are you being overcome to a strength advantage to somebody smaller than you? Yeah. Well, then you should hit the gym. Yeah. <laughs> right. You like, are you being overcome because you're gassing out? Right. And you well, then like, you know, that's part of, that's part of being, mm-hmm. being relatively capable, uh, being capable is part of jujitsu yeah. too. Right. So there is an element of like fitness. Now, if you're able to pull this off while being like unfit right yeah then that's different like you know what I mean? exactly yeah but uh there's there's an element to that but like it holds true and i need to see it be consistent so totally well actually that's an important thing i think this is like a really important concept here i've heard you say that for every single level consistency, consistency it's all about consistency, consistency right it's all about it right like it's not checking the box that's mm-hmm. what i want to get across like once you check the box like okay you check the box for mm-hmm. purple belt Right? All right. Well, you need to be, you need to keep that box checked. Right. For like a year. Yeah. 
You know yeah. what I mean? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. You need to keep, yeah, you just need to keep that box checked. I need to see it consistently. I need to see it over time. I need to see it develop, right? Because it's not, it, it's not just as easy as like checking it off, mm-hmm. right? Like it's, um, it, there's like a, it's a shading in. Right. Right. Yeah. You're shading in the box. So just because you got to mark that box, like, oh, I did it. You need to shade Ooh, that actually, full box in. This just and reminded that, and, me. And the only way to shade it in is through time. I, all right. This just reminded me. Have you ever heard this and or do you know if it's true? Um, and then I have one more question before we get into uh, brown belt. But um, have you ever heard that they used to just give people white belts and you just kept the same belt the whole time? And eventually, because you trained so much, it would just turn black over time. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah. I don't, is that real? I don't know. Maybe that might be like a karate thing or something. I, I would imagine judo. But uh, I could see that. Yeah, but um, again, I don't know. Neither here nor there. Fun, fun story though. But, yeah. Um, so, all right. Last question about uh, blue to purple. So, totally not like a very specific thing at all. This is kind of just like an open thing. But like, imagine if you were coming back from like I don't know, anterior cervical fusion or something like that. You just treat it like you're an old dude, and you just kind of ease back in. Yeah, that's completely fine. Um, so, like for example, you'd be in a, a good example of this. I didn't even think about that. Right. So here goes the thing too. Like if I were to use you personally, Mm -hmm. like what I'm looking for for you Mm -hmm. is you haven't been training jujitsu at a level of like trying to get better at jujitsu in a while Mm -hmm. because you've been so focused on your coaching as, as a striking coach, the team has grown. (laughs) Yeah. The, 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 the the team has grown tremendously. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's no different though than Than not being there. Yeah. Well, no, 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 that's not true. Um, you're still there because you're still around it, so you're still catching. That's true. Of it. I do think jujitsu. You think jujitsu? I mean, like when we're coaching MMA, right? It's not like oh, once the fight hits the mat, you just like start playing on your phone, right, yeah. wait for it to come up. Like you're there, right? right? So in practice, when we're on the ground, it's not like you're just like oh, cool. Like mm-hmm. let me see what's going on on Instagram. Like you're there, right? Right. We talk jujitsu all the time. You watch mm-hmm. jujitsu. You know, you just haven't been able to train jujitsu for yourself in a long time due to out outlying circumstances such as taking over the striking program as far as like the business aspect Mm -hmm. really diving into the fight team not only being responsible for the MMA fight team which is which has grown at a rapid rate Mm -hmm. right and the growth of that team going from like being like a whole amateur team to now having some up and coming pros but you also have your Muay Thai fight team Mm -hmm. as well and I can relate because I have everything you have I have Mm -hmm. right like all your fighters are my fighters Mm -hmm. and like yeah your Muay Thai people aren't my Muay Thai people but my jujitsu I got do you know how many jujitsu competitors I got fair how often how often am I (laughs) if we look at my schedule how often am I out of town for jujitsu tournaments right like a lot Mm -hmm. right and that and jujitsu tournaments man we gotta travel dude I'm in Vegas all the time (laughs) LA Chicago Atlanta like dude yeah like we gotta travel travel yeah bullshit but yeah (laughs) So, like, I can relate to that, but jiu-jitsu is my job, so I'm able to still progress in jiu-jitsu. Mm-hmm. How much have I progressed in striking? In the time that you haven't progressed in jiu-jitsu, how much have I progressed in striking? Mm-hmm. Middle school. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Right? Just because your, you know, passion for it and your systems and, and the things that you think, um, I'm privy to those. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, here goes what happens. He gets excited. He's very yeah. excited. Check this out. And like, what do I say? Like, I don't care. Like, <laughs> I have to listen to it so I learn it. You yeah. know what I mean? So like, I get it. Like, I get what's mm-hmm. going on. But like, you know what I mean? So the same way that your jiu-jitsu has proved could be exactly mirrored to the striking mm-hmm. due to circumstances. Now, if I wanted my striking to improve, I could make sacrifices in other areas mm-hmm. to, to do that, right? So what I'm saying is your jiu-jitsu could improve as well mm-hmm. if you notched out the time for it. Even mm-hmm. now injured, it can improve if you notched out the time for it. This is to say that's no different than anybody else at the gym, right? Life happens, right? Our life that is happening, your life that is happening, happened to involve the gym, so you're still around it, uh-huh. right? But like, you know what I mean? Somebody, you know, kid, kid is now of the age, they got real serious in the soccer, mm-hmm. pulled him away. We had like, kind of like Mike Joling had it happen. Like Brady right. went national level, high school, like mm-hmm. wrestling, right? And he's like, dude. Like, I got to take Brady all over the country, mm-hmm. right? So like, uh, and now Brady's in college and, Mike's back at it, yep. right? You know what I mean? So it's like one of those things, like you got to make that sacrifice and I'm be the first one to tell you sometimes that sacrifice isn't worth it. Like what if Mike was like, I'm going to skip Brady's tournament to go train jiu-jitsu? Right. I'd be like, dude, 
get off these mats. Right, get out yeah. of here. <laughs> Go to that tournament. Are you kidding? And then, like, he never would. Right, But, like, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? I'm not saying, like, I'm not trying to sit on a high horse and be like, you should be at jiu-jitsu. You should make sacrifices to be at jiu-jitsu. No. Sometimes the things you're doing are more important than jiu-jitsu mm-hmm. a lot of times. But if you can, and if jiu-jitsu was more important to you, then you would. Mm-hmm. You know? I'm not saying jiu-jitsu should. Right. It just, right. if it was. Exactly. It so, like, you know what I mean? How long have you been a blue belt? Do you remember when you got your blue belt? What gym were we in? We were at the we were costume donut. shop. We were costume shop. Mm-hmm. We weren't donut shop. No, it was soon after we moved to costume. Dang. Okay, so that was 2016. If it was soon after we moved there, yeah. December 2015. So if it was soon after, it was 2016. So you're eight years. Of being a blue belt. Damn, dude. I was trying to make a quick aside. That doesn't really matter. Let's talk no, no, about... No, I thought that was interesting. I think, dude, I think tons of people are going to find that interesting. Okay, well, if you do, then then let me tell you this. Here's my strategy getting back into jiu-jitsu, right? I need to wait for this to heal a little bit longer. Right. right? Once this is healed a little bit longer, I want to get with dudes I trust, you know, like you, Vince, like, you know, people who I trust, like you were saying earlier, the people who are less likely to injure me, and I'm just going to drill leg locks. Just dude. drill leg locks. Dude, that's it. That's and then it. once I'm done drilling leg locks, I'm why did you, Why did that. you select that? Because I don't need to use my neck. You don't need to use your neck. Uh-huh. Any other reason? Just because just that's the furthest away from Well, me. that's where I need to uh, like catch up my skills most as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good. You know um, what I mean? And dude, it's super. That's such a major portion of the game. Mm-hmm. You have to do that. That's really good. So if you were to ask my advice, if you're like, Mike, I want to jumpstart on this. Mm-hmm. What can I reasonably do? Mm-hmm. I would say start watching jujitsu events. Mm-hmm. Like... And don't go like nothing crazy, but like there was a who's number one mm-hmm. that just happened on Thursday. It's on flow. Yep. Right? You know what I mean? It's it went from like eight PM to eleven PM. You know what I mean? You're gonna watch eight jujitsu matches. Mm-hmm. Right? That's it, dude. Like watch them casually as a fan. Yeah. Don't try to understand the technique. Just let, let it, it like sink in. Just uh-huh. let it drop in. Yeah, you know what I mean? That's what that would be my advice for you right now. Like and you, you know, know what, what I mean? You know why that's extra valuable for me is I know more about it conceptually, like leg locks, than I do about like seeing it at a, at a high level. Because just because like us talking all the time and yeah. like t- knowing theory and stuff, like I know conceptually where X, Y, and Z should go. But then when I see it, I'm like, oh, that's the timing of it. Oh, this is how fast this needs to occur. Like whatever. Dude, honestly, like think about it like this: like everybody who aspires to be better at jujitsu should be watching jujitsu. Mm-hmm. And like, there's people who love instructionals. I'm not one of them. I do dabble in instructionals because right. there's definitely value it's just yeah. I don't enjoy yeah. I don't enjoy doing excuse me doing it all the time but I like watching the the events right. like especially those super fight cards I like watching them and just seeing how they move just seeing what it's supposed to look yeah. like is huge yeah. right like why can every kid in like America go to the basketball court and like do a cross like do like mm-hmm. like no like play the game the way that it roughly looks right because it's on tv and they've seen it oh that's what that looks like mm-hmm. that's what that's supposed to look like right did they get taught it do they know how like why it works no but they know oh that's what it's supposed to look like right mm-hmm. and that and that'll definitely help i think like everybody who does jujitsu should be watching at least some jujitsu right. i'm not like saying like every night do this or even every week but like you know what I mean, like even absorbing it as a fan yeah, will just dude. like make you understand yeah, dude, so just much better. Like type in the World Championships on YouTube and like see what comes up. Like be like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm gonna watch a match. Whoa, that was crazy. Watch one match. Yeah, yeah. watch one match. You know what I mean? Follow Flow Grappling mm-hmm. on Instagram, yeah. right? Like you know what I mean? Now you're seeing like the the so Flow they do this with wrestling. I wonder if they would do it with grappling. I haven't seen it, but they do these things called all killer no filler. Mm-hmm. Right, so what they do is they'll take a whole wrestling card, Mm -hmm. right, like a super fight card, and they will only do the exchanges that lead to scoring. Yeah, right. So you'll watch just like so, like let's say like oh I beat you six to two. Mm -hmm. They would only show us the four exchanges that happened that led to scoring. Right, right. So it's just all the action and none of the like none of the waiting around in between matches. Right. Not yeah and stuff like that. That's pretty cool. That's real cool. But you see that on Instagram things. Yeah, watch jujitsu. Okay, so. Running a little bit short on time here. Yeah. So let's dive into, which by the way, that was excellent advice. Um, oh, okay, hold on, real quick. So that's what I was going to say. I was going to drill leg locks, and once that feels good, I'm going to drill the rest of jujitsu. And as long as my neck holds up, then super limited live with people that I trust, and then just ease that up. Yeah, that's and a great that's plan. The move. Anyways, all right, so let's talk purple to brown. Okay. This Give is, me the overview. This is like 
So again, consistency, right? There's mm-hmm. a minimum time. It's how are you doing in competition? Are you not a competitor? What's the IBJJF time? 18 frame months. On okay. 18 months. Are you not a competitor? Um, you know, things like that, your age, all that still stays the same. It's mm-hmm. just now a higher grading scale. Right. It's not like now I want to see you heel hook people. No, I, it's just everything, the, my same criteria is just like, you more know, refined. Yeah. More refined. Mm-hmm. And it, and it, and it's, this actually just happened this week. So sometimes, you know, promotions come up, people, you know, will lobby mm-hmm. for not for, the, I've never had a person lobby for themselves. Mm-hmm. Never once. Have I had a person? Now, granted, I've only been doing it five years. Like, right. like Warren has been promoting now for, for coming up on fourteen years this July, mm-hmm. right? You know what I mean? Like, I've only been promoting people for five years, right? But like, you know, you get people lobbying, like, oh, you got this dude needs his brown belt, blah blah blah. He's doing this, this, and that. And there was one person who was lobbied for specifically for this promotion for a brown belt, and this person is I consider a very good like. They're not lobbying to me, but they're right. being lobbied for. And the person right. they're being lobbied for, like this person who, who is who is, they're hoping to get their brown belt. That the 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 possible promotee mm-hmm. is a very good friend of mine. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, yeah. like why this and that? They've been a purple belt for this long. They're this good. They do this when I roll with them, and I'm a brown belt. Da, 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 and all that comes into fact. But there's just one little thing here, like this person's age range. We're like close to the same age. This person's a little bit smaller than me, and I have a very high opinion of this person's skills. Mm-hmm. This person does not present what I deem is a strong enough offensive threat against me. And here goes the thing. Since I, since we are training partners, yep. I get the most firsthand information. Mm-hmm. And since I, and he, this is a purple belt, mm-hmm. here goes one of the craziest things. The difference between a purple belt and a black belt, we have competitive roles. Right. I'm a five-year black belt. Right. Right. We have competitive roles, but I don't think you're a brown belt yet Mm -hmm. because I just don't have any positions with you where I'm like, oh, no. Right. And if I think of all of our brown belts, and you know, you're going to have it with some purple belts, and even Mm -hmm. some blue belts have like areas where they're like extraordinary. There's outliers everywhere. Like, yeah, like like, like this dude, if he puts me in leg entanglements, dude, or Mm -hmm. like this person's got the craziest stars, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Or this guy's triangle. There's just I just need to feel more. Threat. I need I need to be scared yeah. at some point in time in some position, mm-hmm. and I'm just not. And it just like and at the end of the day, when I put this belt on you, it's that's that's a something. piece of me. Yeah. That's a piece of me I'm giving you. So if you get it, especially these upper belts, like I'm not playing no games. Yeah, I'm not playing no games right now. Like I just couldn't do it. It just was I struggled. And I struggled. I talked. I I, I consulted Warren. Mm-hmm. Like, what do I do? Like, I kind of think this, but like my gut is telling me that because of this. And he was like, "Yeah, dude, who cares? Like, another one of these is coming around before yep. you know it. You know that person, and like you know, like t- like that person might make that progress in that time, mm-hmm. and, and, and so forth. So, yeah, like it, it, there's a little bit of a feel, right? Like a feel that that I have, mm-hmm. you know, especially." In like most of the upper belts, there's very few upper belts who I'm not personally training. Right, exactly. it's hard to train with all the blue belts. It's hard mm-hmm. to train with like hardly any of the white belts, right? You know what I mean. And the purple belts, like I get to train with most of the purple belts and most of the brown belts. I'm I'm training with. Right. So I've got an intimate feel over your game, and I I think that's for me that's important right now mm-hmm. is that I'm training with you. Right. You know what I mean. I'm not just gonna take someone else's word for it. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to this. feel it. I have to feel it, and it's just got to feel right to me. And just didn't. I mean, dude, it didn't feel wrong. It's just, like I just yeah. like had a question, so I did. I didn't do it, and right now I don't regret. it. And that's good to hear. And I love that about our gym is that the belts that we give out mean something. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I, I really want them too. Yeah, you know. All right, yeah. we've got time for the the pinnacle of all of this, the real question. Okay, what does it take to go from brown belt to black belt? What does it mean to be a black I'm belt? I'm going to give you my current opinion on on what it takes. Mm-hmm. Um, but my opinion doesn't matter because I can't do it. Mm-hmm. I'm not qualified to give out a black belt. Right. But with that being said, I have recommended people for black belt. Um, my advice has been asked. The only person mm-hmm. in our organization who can give a black belt out is Warren. Mm-hmm. I will be the next because I'm next. Mm-hmm. I'm next in line. Um, and then after me will be Logan. Luke. 
Oh. No, Logan came before Luke. Oh, okay. Yeah, Luke, because Luke docked. Luke was supposed to get his black belt. So I got my black belt in 2019. Oh. Luke was supposed to get his black belt later in 2019. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know. I mean, Logan got his black belt in 2021, and Luke got it after. Luke went in two years of ducking the black belts. Now, if you duck belt promotions because you're trying to stay, he uh, like probably in my estimation, and I did. I talked to Luke a little bit about it, like a little bit imposter syndrome. Mm-hmm. So he was like ducking on purpose, which is wild because he's so good. Yeah, and the other thing about it is like other people would get mad at Luke. They're like, "Dude, you're holding us back." Because there is like there's a right. little bit of an order to things. It's like, how can I get my black belt without Luke already? Having right. It? Yeah. Exactly. Like you know what I mean. Like Luke's clearly ahead. Of, like uh-huh. you know what I mean. So there is like an order to things. So right. Luke was jamming. Like <laughs> Luke, Luke did create a log jam, dude. He did. He created a log jam. Ugh. But we're like working our way through it now. Um, what was this? Oh, so then Logan, because Logan mm-hmm. just got his first degree two right. days ago. So in three years, he'll be mm-hmm. eligible for his second and stuff. Um, but what I'm looking for is like, dude, I don't know, you, like you, you, you got to be complete, mm-hmm. right? That doesn't mean that you can't have weaknesses. They just can't be like, you don't know nothing right. about it, right? Like, it's not like a white belt could put you right. here and now you're in trouble. I think that you have to have, you don't have to teach, but you have to have some acumen to teaching. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that, you know, you, if you're a competitor, like then your results need to reflect that of somebody moving to black belt. Mm-hmm. If you're not a competitor, then, you know, it's the same thing. Like, how are you doing against the other black belts? How are you doing against the other brown belts? Have mm-hmm. you been doing it consistently? You know, um, do you provide, like, what do you provide to the community? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? There's like, there's definitely an element of that. Most of the, the people who have gotten their black belts have kind of like their own little, like, like, like group for group like, of uh, like people who like are fond of them. Right. So they like, they tend to like gravitate towards their trainings and teachings mm-hmm. you know what and I style mean? And everything. yeah like that right um so yeah it's just it's just a little bit of that um the most recent we had three really great black belts get promoted mm-hmm. two days ago bob demler has been training for like 13 years all the way back since we were in butler yeah. street had some injuries here or there had a real bad real bad shoulder injury mm-hmm. that came uh from from training jujitsu right. um i broke his shoulder um on purpose um, <laughs> no it's a joke i like like bob like just got his blue belt or was like a newer blue or maybe i just got my purple belt or something uh-huh. and then bob like triangled me and at the time bob was just a blue belt uh-huh. just a blue belt right? right so he triangles me right and i like and i we're restarting and i, and I like cradle him and then like i like dump him down and uh he's like something like it was like collarbone or something and it's like the joke is is like I never apologized, right? And stuff. And so, like, I'll bring it up of, like, yeah, I broke Bob's shoulder, duh, duh, and I never apologized. And I'm like, you know why? And I'm like, why? And I'm like, because I'm not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, Bob's great. He's such a tremendous uh skillful. You know what's awesome about Bob? The, the times that I've rolled with Bob, he beats me, but not because he's bigger than me. Yeah, because like, he's, he's really more, good. He's just so skilled. Exactly. And he's really good at not, like, some people, like, have to. I mean, I've even found myself doing it sometimes where, like, I'm in positions. I'm like, oh, I can't not use my strength. But then sometimes he just does, and he just uses technique, and I'm like, wow, dude, you're really good. <laughs> yeah, dude, and he plays a little man's game, and he's like six foot right. seven. And huge. You know? Yeah. Yeah, he's huge. He's, he's a big guy, and he plays a little man's game, and he's so skillful. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so he got his, uh, Mary Orstein got her black belt, becoming the first female black belt in mm-hmm. uh, style PGA. Dude, she gave a great speech dude, afterwards. Tremendous speech. That was so inspiring. Yeah, it was like... very inspiring of what it's like to be a woman in jiu-jitsu mm-hmm. and coming up. Um, like, when she started, she said that, you know, the role model for women to look up to was a a four strike white belt. Right. Yeah. You know, and now here we go. We have a Uh black belt. Um, and then, you know, Vince, Vince got Mm -hmm. Vince, a fellow style PGH fight team coach, Mm -hmm. as well as the, uh, head guy over in Monroeville got his black belt. Mm -hmm. And like one of the things, so, so I did a little talk for Vince, um, because it it was an important one to me. Like Mm -hmm. if we could, if timing would have worked out for Vince to like, if he was a year behind, like I would have loved to have right. him to have been my first black belt. Yeah, like, that'd, that'd be, be cool. super cool. Yeah, but you know, nothing you could do, and it, and it, it makes more sense because Warren is his coach. I did get to coach Vince for a little bit, but Warren is like the, mm-hmm. his main instructor. You know something sure. crazy about Vince? What? I started jujitsu before him. You did, and there was a long time where I was smashing Vince, and then like he got better than me, and for like three months he didn't know yet. 
Oh, so I was still smashing him, and I was like, him. yo, when's he going to figure it out? Yeah. And then he figured it out, and I've never beat him since. Yeah, dude, he's so good. He's a very good competitor. He's competed uh-huh. at a high level at Brown Belt. And I've been saying, I'm like, dude, I'm like, from me competing at Brown Belt and then competing at Black Belt, like, I'm like, dude, like, I don't feel a difference. Feels the exact same. It's hard. They're both yeah. hard. Yeah. Right? They're both hard. I was like, you're fine. Like, he can do that. Uh, he's a great teacher. Tremendous training partner. One of my favorite people to roll with. Just a great teammate, too. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, I mean, like, Let's not forget, like, Vince was portrayed my opponent for the latter half of my fight my fight career, mm-hmm. right? And, like, to no benefit of his own. Right, yeah. You know? <laughs> it didn't benefit him. <laughs> so, like, yeah. He, and, oh, he, also, his style in jiu-jitsu. Mm-hmm. He got good at guard so I could get better at passing. Yep. <laughs> right? Like, you know what I mean? So, he's done a lot of selfless things uh, and just, like, the epitome of a black belt. So, yeah. uh, Warren let, let me use my belt, one of my right. black belt belts. To, for, for him to do Vince that was yeah, really cool that was very cool so yeah I mean like I don't really have to worry about what I think mm-hmm. it takes to be a black belt because I can't do nothing about not it not yet but yeah <laughs> yeah but those are some of the things that I'm probably going to be looking for right yeah but here goes the thing though like if you're getting your black belt like I've likely known you for eight plus yeah. years yeah I've seen your like development there's just like something there's a feel to yeah. it as well I'm like mm-hmm. it's time yep like it's time the, the one thing, though, about black belts, and this is how Luke kind of jammed us up a little bit, is, like, for example, this is not going to air. We don't know when this is going to air, but I'm going to give out a blue belt tonight mm-hmm. at class. I'm going right. to go to Zelianople tonight, yep. right? There's going to be classes, and I'm going to give out a blue belt to somebody who couldn't make belt promotions. Right. And, you know, I could wait till the next belt promotions, but this is a competitive blue belt. Here's a good example of a competitive blue belt. Mm-hmm. This person needs this blue belt to compete at blue belt. Yep. Right? So I can't wait. I can't wait till next mm-hmm. promotion. I can't be like, oh, you should have showed up to promotion. Yeah. No, I can't. Because this person, she needs to compete at Blue Belt uh-huh. right now. Yep. You know? So there's one going out tonight. But that would be a, a, that would be such a disservice to do at Black Belt. Right. Black Belts have to be done at the ceremony. Mm-hmm. Because that Black Belt, and I, I guess somebody, I think maybe Warren said it at the promotions. But that Black Belt, that's not just for you. That's for all of us. Yep. Right? That's why you, I said this to Luke. Like, one of the ways that I felt like I got Luke to finally go. I was like, that's not just for you. That's for all of us. That's all of ours. You know what I mean? Like, you owe it to us. Mm-hmm. You know, type of thing. Uh, yeah, so it's like, it's like you know, it's bigger than you, your black belt. So it has to be done with everyone because it's not yours. It's everybody's black belt. Yeah. Dude, that's super cool. Yeah. It's a good thing to end on because we're out of time. Hey, that's a good one. So, yeah. Who knows when this will drop, but... uh you know, it was a good one. Uh, I think a lot of the jiu-jitsu students, especially style PGH students, are going to find that quite interesting. And we will catch you next time on Listen to Your Coaches.